My name is Courtney Gilbert and I'm the Curator of Visual Arts at Sun Valley Museum of Art. Our Winter 2020 exhibition is titled The Bottomlessness of a Pond, Transcendentalism, Nature and Spirit. And like many of our exhibitions, this one is part of a larger Big Idea project full of a whole calendar of programs. So this Big Idea project is an opportunity to have a conversation about how in this technology saturated moment, the transcendentalists emphasis on on really finding spiritual solace in nature is something that might be useful to all of us. The exhibition includes work by six contemporary artists, each of whom is responding to the legacy of transcendentalism in different ways. Spencer Finch is an internationally known artist whose whole practice really revolves around the nature of memory and our perceptions of color and light and how those shape our memories. Many of his projects merge the precision of science with the more poetic side of his practice, and that's true of the piece that we have in this exhibition, which is called Walden Surface Slash Depth. Um, and Finch made the piece, which exists in between the realms of sculpture and drawing. It's a 120 foot long rope that is laid out on our floor. Finch made this, this piece after he re-performed the survey that Henry David Thoreau did of Walden Pond in the, in the 1840s, at a point when a lot of people in Concord believed the pond was bottomless. He took out with him a rope tied with weights, and at each of the soundings he made, he made a note of the color of the surface of the water at that place, and then later made the watercolor swatches, which are tied on at their corresponding points of depth. Like Thoreau, Finch invites us to join him in close observation of nature. Like Spencer Finch, Jane D. Marshing has made a number of bodies of work specifically about Walden Pond, the place where Henry David Thoreau famously lived for two years in a cabin, trying to reject the material in favor of a spiritual connection with nature. In this exhibition, we have five prints that Marshing made collaboratively with printers at Ningio Press in Massachusetts. And the prints are called Ice Out at Walden. When Thoreau was living there, he made a note in his journals every year when the ice disappeared from the surface of Walden Pond. Marshing has made prints that visualize that set of data, that set of information about weather at Walden Pond, compared with contemporary observations of the day that the ice disappears each year now. The prints are sort of a beautiful way of kind of trying to not only visualize the breakup of ice on water and to document wind speeds and wind records from the 19th century and the 21st century, but also to come to terms with the effects of climate change and their impact on our experience of nature. William Lanson is an artist who's based in Brooklyn, New York, and almost all of his projects use either the elements, weather, or time as part of their process. And we have two bodies of work in this exhibition. The first is a film that the Decordova Museum in Concord, Massachusetts commissioned a few years ago, for which Lamson made a one to five scale model of Thoreau's cabin that he turned into a camera obscura and then floated on the pond to make a film called In the Roaring Garden. Um, and the film is just over 18 minutes long and it's this really beautifully meditative opportunity to experience the passing landscape. And because the device he built was a camera obscura, all the imagery is inverted. So sky is below, water is above throughout the film. We also have a set of photographs of a project that was commissioned by Storm King Art Center in 2012. And for that project, Lamson built a structure that's loosely modeled on Thoreau's cabin. It's also a reflection on the tradition of mountain chapels for meditation. And it's a glass and steel structure composed of more than a hundred panes of glass, sandwiched between the panes of glass are um, sheets of sugar that Lamson has cooked to different temperatures in order to achieve different colors. 
Claire Sherman is a painter based in New York who is known for large scale paintings that kind of immerse viewers into this natural world that takes on a kind of spiritual and almost mystical quality. We have one painting of trees that I think really um, gets at that idea in her work. And then we have another painting she made, was likely inspired by a visit she made to um, Craters of the Moon. We also have a selection of these small mixed media works on paper that are glimpses into her working process. Leslie Dill is an artist who's been making work that incorporates text for a number of decades. And she's really interested in the physical relationship between written word and text and the human body. And she makes that relationship visible in a bunch of interesting ways using different kinds of materials, ranging from fabric to wire, glass to collage. Since the early 1990s, Dill has been working quite a bit with the poetry of Emily Dickinson. We have three pieces that incorporate fragments of Dickinson's poetry directly into them. One is this, this wonderful collage on Hindi newspaper that uses the phrase, I saw the wind within her from a Dickinson poem. And then we have a glass flower and wire piece um, called I Had a Daily Bliss that reproduces an entire short Dickinson poem. We have a piece called Poem Suit, for which Dill took a kind of oversized men's suit and cut the text of all the letters from the poem to be alive as power. Finally, we have a piece she made called Hester in response to Nathaniel Hawthorne's um, famous The Scarlet Letter. And so in this really subtly, beautifully layered collage piece, we have this, this female figure of Hester repeated three times with words taken from The Scarlet Letter about you know encountering mysteries in the wilderness. The final body of work in the exhibition is a set of four photographs that were made by the really well-known photographer Richard Barnes. Barnes has pursued a lot of different types of projects over his career, but one thing that has kind of consistently interested him is the role that photography plays in police evidence. And so we have four photographs in this exhibition that he made in 1998, after he got permission from the FBI to photograph the cabin of Ted Kaczynski, who is probably better known as the Unabomber. And there are a number of different types of photographs that Barnes made in that project, but these four present the cabin as a sort of a piece of evidence. Kaczynski had modeled the cabin to some extent on Thoreau's. The photographs are interesting because they take the idea of an anti-materialist independent life in the natural world to it's sort of its illogical extreme. They offer an interesting coda, I think, to the conversation about the positive legacy that transcendentalism has left us with in the 21st century. One of the reasons that we as a staff were interested in pursuing this project was because so many of us live in the Wood River Valley or visit the Wood River Valley because of our own personal relationship to nature. And so we thought it was a, a topic that many people who spend time here would be interested in participating in. And I hope that everyone will come in and see the exhibition. There's work in so many different media. It's an opportunity to, um, to pause and to think about our own connection to the natural world.